Self-Managed Super conducted its annual SMSF roundtable earlier this year to garner the opinions of some of the most respected experts in the sector about the most important current issues. During this segment, we asked the panel how the introduction of transfer balance account reporting is progressing at the moment. I, I think it's going reasonably. Now, that might be a harsh assessment of it, but there's some kinks in it which cause people angst. And um, I've, I've been having a look at some reversionary pensions where they sort of get double counted uh, or counted in an unfair way. And I've got one client whose wife died on the 27th of June last year, and he's still grieving her loss, and uh, he's a very sad man. And uh, we're trying to make sure that he doesn't get uh, an excessive determination on the 28th of June this year, and that's bloody hard um, mm. because of the way in which the system works against some of those things. They, they'll get deter excess determinations in situations where they probably shouldn't. Um, the reporting of it, uh, I think that the initial year and the generosity of the ATO there um, is, we've got to thank them for that because we we're still getting used to a whole range of new concepts out of the 2017 uh, arrangements. I mean, they gave us a year to get the uh, uh, some of that information in and a little bit further than that up until the end of October. So that worked pretty well. Um, but uh, the ATO, I think, uh, is getting a little bit tired of some of the things that are going on where people are coming back and and providing additional information or different information from that that was originally um, provided to them. And uh, I don't think it'll be long before there'll be some determinations come out there which uh, uh, the ATO will have a closer look like it did with some of those RBL things many years ago, closer look at what's actually gone on uh, to work out whether a determination should issue uh, in those circumstances. Don't, no, I mean, they've, they've indicated they're going to look at those things and I don't think they're going to draw a line in the sand. I might be wrong there. I know you've talked about drawing lines in sand, in sand too. Um, it would be a good, I, I think it would be good, but often you often, you see that that gets extended and extended, so it may be better the approach they've got saying we're going to start looking at these and we're going to take action on the ones that are the worst first and then you know, try and rein it in, a bit of a ring fence sort of approach to it. What do you think? Um, yeah, I think overall, the, for, for what is a complex system, very difficult for people to get their heads around, very difficult transitional period to go through uh, and plan for. Um, I guess we're probably at comparative with the easier end of the T-bar system now, at least having at least hopefully navigated most clients through the, um, the more difficult transitional arrangements and so on that needed to be done as well. Um, there are still obviously bits of it that don't work well um, and we have been highlighting those uh, when we can to the government to sort of say that there, there are still issues that need, need to be addressed. The reversionary pension issue is a very com is clunky, far more clunky than what it looked like it was going to be. Yeah, you know, to sure. sort of say you're going to have 12 months to report this sounds like pretty fair until you discover that actually you've still got to report it all at the time it happens. It's just it doesn't count until 12 months later. So you've still got reporting obligations immediately after someone's death, you know, almost, and, and yet even they may have no relevance for another 8, 10, 12 months or something like that before it actually is a credit. They're just funny little quirky things, I think, that have come out of the system from a practical point of view that it, it wouldn't hurt, I think, to be looking at those, reviewing them again. They, they're clearly... I think in many instances unintended consequences. I I still think, um, you know, one one of the more interesting amendments to the legislation was the removal of the um, the ability to segregate assets if you have one member with more than one point six million dollars in superannuation. The fear being that they would start moving assets in and out of the accumulation of pension pool to avoid tax. I, I mean. You know, that opportunity has been there since 1988 and it's never been a systemic problem. I mean, you know, um, goodness me, uh, if, as long as they've had tax and superannuation, they've had that ability to move their assets in and out of accumulation pools and pension pools to try and avoid capital gains tax. And the anti-avoidance provisions in the tax acts and so on mm. seem to have managed that quite well. I mean, there are, there are bits of the legislation, I think, that were introduced for 
a legitimate reasons, I guess you must say they're legitimate concerns, but, but it would be a useful time, now that we've had it for a couple of years, to perhaps review some of those um, quirkier aspects of the legislation, see whether they still have a relevance or whether they can work a little better. Mm. Actually, not really. The only thing, probably not a regular one, is perhaps just the role of our term allocated pensions and you know, all those lifetime pensions. I think I don't think the ATO. There was a a few months ago, last year, even an announcement about um, you know when you commuted, it should be that there's a, there's been a double counting. I don't think there has been further guidance on no, that. No, I mean Stuart, Stuart Robert, when yeah. he was uh, minister, <coughs> made some announcements, mm. and uh, that's in the the great pot. Yes, that in was the big the, pool yeah, waiting. To, yeah, yeah. And we'll see what happens in the next <laughs> month or so. Yeah, but otherwise, I only just, I've only ever had one advisor who <laughs> fell out the TBAR from wrong, and we, and then we went through the whole process of resubmitting, and because you can revoke one and do one, it was actually quite relatively easy uh, once you know what to do. So, so yeah, to Peter's point, actually, at this point in time, it's perhaps better than I anticipated, but still. Uh, uh, how, but the process of getting here was indeed quite painful. Yeah, that frustration of the timing, particularly where people were rolling over money from uh, APRA funds or industry funds to self-managed funds and vice versa, um, you ended up with double reporting. In I mean, the ATO was great <coughs> when that needed to be amended because of that mismatch, um, provided the self-managed fund um, notified the ATO of that, then the ATO certainly amended that, which was great, and put, put it in the right, uh, or corrected a little space. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that worked. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was always inherent. I mean, I think that the ATO was keen for exact one of the, with, with, that was one of the key reasons why they were keen for SMSFs to report more regularly from day yeah, one. Yeah, that's right. Um, was to, av to avoid that issue. Um, and uh, clearly when you've got uh, someone who's reporting virtually on that one fund, reporting virtually on a daily basis because they have so many members that they may as well versus someone who reports you know, annually sort of nine months after the event. Mm. You know, all sorts of problems and mismatches can arise. Um, that wasn't the case in the end. They decided that that, that particular idea wasn't, wasn't sufficiently important enough to pursue it or imp impose it upon self managed super funds in the short term. But it's, the other thing I suppose it says is it, um, it's going to be interesting to see how reporting develops in the self managed super fund space, isn't it? going forward and how how more transparent it becomes and how how quicker it becomes in terms of real-time reporting, that the holy grail of real-time reporting, whatever that looks like and whatever that means, um, I think will, will it will eventuate. And I mean, I think that um, the people who support the self and super fund industry in terms of software development and, and all the administration services and so on, it, it's in their camp to sort of see how quickly that will uh, come about. And then a lot of these issues go away. Bring on Superstream all the quicker, but uh, yep. that's not going to happen until 2021, which is unfortunate. No, it's a bit unfortunate. But um, nevertheless, at least we will have um, uh, release authorities added, we will, which yeah. will be a good thing.